Oh, these rockets. Oh, they are so powerful. They're doing about three times the damage they're meant to be doing, which is just perfect for me. Oh, fantastic. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and welcome to today's video. We're playing Total War Warhammer 2, quite possibly one of the best grand strategy games on the market at the moment, and in my opinion, probably the best Warhammer game out there. It's absolutely fantastic and full of great fun, but in today's video, we're going to be doing something very unique. You see, like all Total War games, the developers want you to have a nice, unique, balanced army which is powerful at defeating numerous quantities of foes, or building up a specialized army just perfect for defeating, say, the undead, or Skaven, or Lizardmen. You name it, you've got to min-max it. But today, we're doing none of that, ladies and gentlemen. Instead, we're not min-maxing, we're just maxing. We are going to go on a quest to see just how far you can take the artillery-only build in Total War Warhammer 2. The artillery only build would be playing as any faction in the Empire and having an army comprised of mostly just the fantastic Hellstorm rocket batteries. These are effectively the Warhammer equivalent of the USSR's Katushka. It's fantastic. So we're going to be diving into a game and I'm going to be trying to exploit every single system this game has in order to get the most you physically can out of a Katushka. So make sure you're sat back, you're relaxed and you're ready for this one ladies and gentlemen, because trust me, it's going to be one exciting spicy bugger of a game. So make sure you've saluted your picture of the queen which hangs above your computer, poured yourself another cup of tea, and you know what? If you want to sign yourself up to die as a peasant farmer on the front lines of the empire, you might have even hit that like. Right, let's jump into the video. So we're going to need to immediately start a brand new campaign of the Mortal Empires, because of course I have the Vortex. It's great fun, but Mortal Empires, there's just so much more of a world to conquer. Now, of course, when it comes to the Mortal Empires, you can play as the hippie elf boys, oh, they're just boring. Or you can play as the dork elves, even more boring. The lizard men, oh, who'd want to play lizard men? You could play as some zombie pirates, some rat boys, some Egyptian mummies, or you could play as Britonia. Oh, what terrible choices. Alternatively, you can play as the glorious empire of man. Now, the empire is a very unique faction because basically it's just one great big mass of land around about here, which all swears fealty to one dude. Now, when it comes to which dude to play, you have a couple of choices. You can play as the legendary Emperor Karl Franz, Balthazar Gelt, or you can play as Marcus Wolfhart in the middle of nowhere. Of course, we're not going to do the latter. That's uh, probably not much fun. Instead, we're going to be playing as Balthazar Gelt because immediately he's a very unique lord. He gets all of the classic race attributes which all of the other factions get, which is a nice well-rounded unit roster. You can summon the elector counts. You have an imperial authority, which is great fun. But what makes him so unique is not only does he give all of his units an extra 10 armor, he has more and cheaper battle wizards, what makes him oh so special is this Lord Effects plus 10% missile damage for artillery in the Lord's army. This is perfect. This is everything you need and so much more. But this is our first 10% increase to missile damage. And this is where we're going to be starting our campaign. We're going to crank it up to normal on both, but this will be achievable on every single difficulty the game has. Right, let's start ourselves a new campaign. Oh, here we have it. Fantastic. We're in the game. Now, of course, we control the lovely town slash city of Pifeldorf. Pfeldorf? Oh, this is a place in the Empire, trust me. Now, the Empire and the Golden Order are a pretty fun and simple faction to play. Basically, you're playing a battle wizard who has a bunch of magical superpowers, and you have to lead him about the land as he, um, you know, liberates them from other people. Now, the way this game works is that there are a bunch of different elect accounts, all of which have a certain level of fealty to us. For example, the people of Avaland over here have a natural fealty of 8 towards us. If we get that number up to 10, they'll immediately confederate with us, and what that means is their entire empire becomes ours. All of their armies are ours, everything. It's great fun. But also, the way the elect account system works is that everyone has a specific bonus for the region they control. For example, Balthazar Geld here, our lovely legendary lord, is controlling the region of Soland. What that means is that he can recruit extra people, he gets to Vorngard deploy, and 
and he gets a decrease in upkeep. Fantastic, he also gets a unique weapon and a unique special set of infantry. That's all great, well done Balthazar. The only difference is, there are some better regions out there. Most importantly, the region of Vissenland to our left. Vissenland over here grants us a very important bonus if you're the Count of Vissenland. You not only get 40% missile resistance, you also get plus 10% missile damage for artillery units, plus 2% recruit rank for artillery units, and a decrease in upkeep again. But what is so important for this is that it is a plus 10% damage increase for artillery units. If we add that to the existing Balthazar Geralt, that means it's a plus 20% damage for all artillery units. Now that's perfect. So that's one of the ways we're going to be increasing our damage. There are of course a few other ways, the most easy being the tech tree. Now the way the tech tree works is we have firing drills here, which makes it so that all of our artillery are going to be reloading and shooting faster, which is great. We can increase the ammunition, which is also fantastic. And most importantly, another plus 8% missile damage for artillery units is found right here. This is great. We're going to be quite a while off of this though, and you're probably going to want to sink most of your early research into things like the assembly line, then the Imperial University, and also make sure to grab the combustion agent because this is going to make all of our Hellstorm rocket batteries even better when we spawn them in. But that's not all, ladies and gentlemen. There's even more we can add on. So already we've got plus 28% damage, but there is technically more to be had. It's just going to be very complicated to find. You see down here, we of course have the Wolfheart Huntsman or whoever he is. He's a man of the Empire who runs around here just basically hunting lizard men in a forest and the Empire sends him supplies. That is genuinely his entire job. However, he has a more important purpose for us because as long as we get our lovely Balthazar Gelt over here all the way across the map to murder him, then guess what? I have some fantastic news for you. If you manage to find and kill Marcus Wolfhart with any Lord, that Lord immediately gains plus 5% missile damage to their entire army and plus 10% missile resistance. That's fantastic. And that's not even all, ladies and gentlemen, because already we're up to plus 32%, provided we get all of these traits together. After that, we also have some even greater improvements. Firstly, we of course have the additional Orb of Sorcery, which is great. It means all of the Luminarch units and Steam Tank units do even more damage. They will also receive the bonus from our general improvements to all range units. So that means we're going to have very powerful steam tanks, more powerful steam tanks than we actually have Hellstorm rocket batteries, but I personally prefer the Hellstorm. But to improve it even more after that, we have the Imperial Gunnery bonuses, which allow us to gain an extra plus 12% damage. So that means we go from doing 32, I think, to doing about 44. And then you can add an additional plus 12% on top of the 44 to do plus 56% damage with ranged units. That's not actually as far as it can go. It can go even further, but it's going to take us a long time to get there, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to need to sit ourselves back and get comfortable because this is going to be one hell of a campaign for Total War Warhammer 2. These videos take a bloody long time, so let's jump into it. And already I'm going to have to restart because I accidentally moved Balthazar Gelt all the way into the wrong region. Come on, you just had to defeat one tiny garbage goblin army. Ugh. Balthazar. Welcome to the first big point in our game. It's around about turn uh, 29 and we've managed to capture ourselves Castle Drakenhof over here. I know it's a very important little region for us to grab because it's effectively nullified the vampire counts from being a fawn in our side and it's going to allow us to expand northwards up here and also at the same time the elector count over here of Ostermark decided to try and escape from the empire and as you know when someone tries to leave the empire it's a perfectly justifiable opportunity to annex all of their lands which is exactly what we're doing. We're going to sweep on up through the vampire counts, probably leave Castle Templehof to the moot, and then run all the way up here to take over Ostermark. I know, it's going to be great fun. Now, we still haven't managed to get the opportunity to take Vissenland yet. Basically, we either need them to rebel or some kind of event where they attack someone, and then we can jump in on the opposite side of them and steal their capital province. If we manage to grab Nolan, then that gives us the ability to put, hopefully, Balthazar Gelt in control of Vissenland. Land. Anyway, we're on the march as always uh, to just steal land from the vampire counts. Most of these fights aren't even that tricky. We can kind of just march our way in and go, oh, hello there, vampire counts. Oh, what's that? You have an entire stack of men, a lot of crypt ghouls. Wow, they're pretty dangerous, aren't they? Well, it's a shame they don't stand up against waves and waves of spear dudes backed up with a bunch of archers and a couple of crazy night cavalries. Oh, and we're bam. That's it. 
That's literally it. It's crazy how this game works, but that's an easy decisive victory. Only 296 losses. And these archers here managed to get 220 kills. What the hell were they even shooting at? My goodness. All right, well, that was easy. That's an occupation. And now that's all of Eastern Sylvania secured for us, which is lovely. It's probably time we peace out with uh, Sylvania because there's no need for us to take Castle Temple off. It doesn't offer us any unique bonuses. And so we must consequently march Balthazar Gelt up north. Uh, whilst all of this is going, on by the way he's improved his imperial gunnery skill up to maximum which is great and you know what i should probably grab him his golden face mask for his plus 20 armor there we go that'll give him some power fantastic this is going great oh no ladies and gentlemen this is an opportunity turn 37 and visseland declares independence now naturally we've uh, voted to stop visseland by force because this was what we were looking for all along oh it's perfect we've got an army here just ready to deal with it oh it's gonna be great right you, my friend, are going to go defeat the Vampire Count Rebels and then march on Wissenberg. You know what, whilst we're at it, we're also going to recruit a new lord. We're going to probably grab some kind of Huntsmaster General, one of these guys. They're going to be fantastic. I suppose we could also recruit a Battle Wizard. They're always good fun. Look at them. They are pretty expensive, though, but we can get five of them in an army if we really wanted. Anyway, it looks like we're going to need to finish up with our siege over here and then run on. So we're going to have to manually fight this siege ourselves. Although, knowing how the AI is going to work, they're probably going to sally out and attack us and we'll crush that no problem. Anyway, it's off to Wissenberg very soon, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be one exciting moment as as soon as we get Wissenberg, we get that plus 10% artillery damage and Balthazar Gelt, oh, he's been practicing for his artillery. I mean, just look at him. He's level 15. He's maxed out his Imperial gunnery. All he needs is his Emperor's Finest. Then he can get Rally and then finally we can drop one more point into Artillery Master and that is just perfect. Oh, it's 10 turns after the Wissenberg Declaration of Independence and as you can tell, independence has kind of backfired for Wissenberg because their capital province is now surrounded by the combined forces of Balthazar Gelt. Here, now backed up with Kurt Allen Stag, the brand new Hunts Marshal, as well as Dirk Forbes. I know, it's going to be great. And we're going to be taking this capital right now. Oh, what's this? We only have a 50% chance of winning the siege. Sure, you know, whatever you say. You're right. You're right, game. I often get this wrong. Yep, yeah, I haven't brought enough men. They're going to absolutely crush me. I must be mistaken. You know what? I'm going to have to continue and end my turn. <laughs> and next turn, they're probably going to sally out and attack me on the field of battle. Oh my goodness. Please do it. Please leave the fort and defensive structure to attack me. Oh, that would be so good. You're a very smart AI. You know you want to. You know you do. Come on, you're moving your hero. Come on, what's your hero doing? Oh, you don't sally out. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, and Avaland has offered their confederation. Well, you know what? We might as well accept it. Oh, thank you, Avaland. Oh, that's an entire province secured. Lovely stuff. Oh, and of course it comes with a free army. Rudiger Volkman now is ours. All right, I think it's time for us to do our siege, ladies and gentlemen. We've got all of our dudes here. We've got one battering ram. I think this will probably be a nice and easy battle. And by that I mean I'm controlling a large army, so thousands of people are going to die when I inevitably forget they exist and they end up walking straight into a massive gun pointing at their face. Or they just stand in one location while hails of artillery fire rains down upon them as I forget to micro them out of a position. Ah, oh, perfect. The siege can begin. This is going to be one complicated siege because they have reinforcements, they have a lot of artillery. It's going to basically be all about seeing who can get on the walls first, really, for my men. Why on earth are the great swords leading the battering ram in? Well, you know what? I'm not going to ask questions. We're just going to send them in. And then we're going to have a wave of spearmen just run onto the walls and probably die trying. Whilst all of my lovely archers can just sit and relax. All right, here we go. It's time for the big invasion. Oh my goodness, there's a perfect shot for the mortars right back here. Oh, we're just going to cause havoc for this gatehouse. And immediately our massive next wave of infantry is just rocked up. Oh, you guys are going to have fun. I hope you enjoyed storming the breaches because that's what we have planned for you. Oh yes, the first men are climbing up the ladders now. This is perfect. We've had massive casualties, which is just how I like it. I mean, what's the point of really fighting your own battles when you can just rein in artillery? on your own men's positions. And of course, Balthazar Gelt's casted an absolutely crazy spell, which has just immediately eviscerated a thousand people. You know, we can just cast more spells down, because why not? He's Balthazar Gelt. He can do a bunch of magic stuff. Oh, and they just open the doors for us. Oh, that's very nice of them. Oh, and there we go. We've done it. Fantastic. We managed to rout all of their forces in the end. It was a very costly battle, and I'm sure we've lost a lot of men, but honestly, it doesn't actually matter. It was a decisive victory. Apparently, the auto-resolve wouldn't have been a decisive 
close the victory. Oh, and of course, Boutzel Gelt got 187 kills from casting a bunch of wizard magic into the crowd. Hats off to him. We did kind of get shredded by the artillery, which is a perfect example of why it's good to have the artillery on your side rather than helping the enemy. Anyway, with the AI forces dealt with now, this puts us in a very nice position. Anyway, there we go. That's the decisive victory we're looking for. That's an entire faction defeated, and that is this entire province now in our control. Perfect. Known is ours, ladies and gentlemen. And that's basically their faction destroyed as well. I'm sorry, Heinz Hertivangs and Heinz Hunterick. Oh my goodness. What is this army? It's just two dudes, both called Heinz. It's the Heinz Bros. Well, good job, Heinz Bros. They're just running around our lands. That's fine. Let's finish them off. Right. F in chat for the Heinz Bros, ladies and gentlemen. F in chat. And there we go. With the death of both of the Heinz Bros, Vissen Land has been defeated. <laughs> And we killed in battle. <laughs> Just why are they both called Heinz? It's almost as good as Van von Volk Van Van, which is a true name which can generate in this game, I know. So I've been building up our economy and it's now turn uh, 69. Well, okay, I actually didn't do that deliberately. This just happens to be the turn where I can finally do the quest for the Cloak of Molten Metal, which is a very unique item for good old Balthazar Gelt. Gives him just a bunch of resistances and makes him very nice and overpowered. So yep, we're gonna go and do this quest battle with our force of dudes. Pretty sure we're fighting against undeads, which uh, isn't actually that difficult for us, so this is going to be a very easy and lovely fight. Oh my god, we're going to win this instantly. There's not even a point of me actually fighting this on the battle map. Oh wait, no, we can't auto-resolve. Fantastic, I've got to actually fight this. Oh, such a challenge this is going to be. And here we go, our perfect optimum army setup. Already from our starting position, we can just rain a lot of fire onto them. We have a bunch of dudes stealthed into a forest who are able to cause a bunch of chaos too. And of course I can cast magic from my starting zone. Of course, right, there we go. That's just going to be a squad of zombies annoyed. The vampire lords are no more. Naturally, I completely beansed up the battle yet again in true British fashion and I had a massive quantity of horses just charge into the enemy. I watch them and then I just forget about them and watch them slowly get slaughtered by skeleton spearmen. Some of the weakest and cheapest units in the game killing some of the most powerful. Oh well, that's just how it works with me. Oh, welcome back to Warhammer. It's now turn 82 and some good progress has been made. We are now the strongest faction in the entire world, although we have just entered into war with the next most strongest faction, the Black Crag Orcs. Yes, uh, they're really big. They basically control almost the entirety of the map here, and they also for some reason control the map up here. So yes, we're going to do our best effort to kind of just oust them from our general area. So it's a good thing we confederated a bunch of times because we actually have quite a few armies lying around. Oh my goodness, and we got the Staff of Valanis quest at the same time. Well, we'll just leave that for the time being because we're getting really close to actually being able to recruit the artillery. You see, whilst we could have recruited the artillery previously, if we wait for this city to be level 5 and we also upgrade the Nolan Gunnery School, then all of our artillery recruits 4 ranks higher. Currently, our Huntsman General here can recruit the Hellstorm Rocket Battery at a skill level of 6. Provided the Hellstorm Rocket Battery has a skill level of 7, they receive the plus 12% damage increase which Balthazar Gelt provides them with. It's a really important skill to have. So naturally, we need to make sure that we can actually recruit the Hellstorm rocket batteries of that skill before we buy a bunch of them and then watch them die in battle. And then once we finally have that army, we need to go on our magical adventure across all of the oceans of the world to go find the Huntsmaster General and murder him. Only then can we have true power in true total total war. One thing we now have access to, though, is improved battle wizards. I know, these are not just your regular battle wizards. We are able to recruit wizards at rank 10, which just makes them very powerful. Naturally, we're going to go for Ian Toddbringer. <laughs> what kind of name is this? you got Boris Toddbringer over there, aka the legendary Toddy. But no, this is his slightly less impressive cousin, Ian Toddbringer. Oh my goodness. So you might be wondering why we chose to get the Bright Wizard. I know, there's a bunch of different wizards out there and we chose to get this one. My reasoning is quite simple. Basically, if we upgrade our lovely fireball spell here, we get access to Kindle Flame, which means means we cast a map-wide continuous debuff which grants a 22% weakness to fire damage on everyone on the map. This is fantastic because it means all of our flame-based artillery does even more damage. What we can then improve even more is the Flaming Sword of Ruin. We can upgrade this three times and suddenly we have a spell which doesn't actually cost that much and improves missile damage by 25%. It's a fantastic little spell. And there we have it, we now have Ian Toddbringer, the perfect companion for any missile-based army. So we're going to have to send him to meet up with good old Balthazar. 
I often get asked a lot about which YouTubers I actually recommend or follow for like the games I play and certainly for Warhammer 2 you've got a bunch of great content creators out there. My personal favourite are the classic Tom and Ben Twitch streams but of course I still hold out hope that YouTubers like Mandalore are eventually going to cover this game and of course I can never lose my true favourite, my sweet sweet Irish boys of RT and Call Me Kevin, those beautiful sausages. Not that they'd probably ever play a game like this but my goodness I just love them too. Bam! I've jumped into the midpoint of the video and you you were least expecting me. I know, that's right, it's me, and oh my goodness, are we moving into smooth jazz FM? Oh my goodness, yes, we're going into smooth voice mode for this sponsored announcement. That's right, this message is brought to you by Spiffco itself. We're here to remind you that the hallucinogenics we slipped into your tea should be taking effect right about now, and your desire to like the video should have increased by about 14,000%. Thank you to those in the Spiffco R&D division for creating that. And not only that, but the boffins in the research division created this brand new line of glorious and majestic merchandise scientifically verified to increase your charisma stats by 14,000% and your softness by a good 15.75% too. They're actually really bloody comfy. I'm wearing mine now, which I got ahead of time, and it's nice and soft. And honestly, that's all I want from my jumpers because soft and warm jumpers warm up my cold, icy, and dead heart. God bless fabrics, they're great. Anyway, let's dive back into the video. Oh, this is it, ladies and gentlemen gentlemen, the turn I've been waiting for. Turn 106, we finally got our empire up and running, and we have our Hellstorm batteries. Immediately they are recruited at maximum rank. This is level 9, meaning before we actually move them to Balthazar Gelt, their actual missile damage is 510. This is in comparison to their regular base missile damage, which is 340. Basically, these guys are better. They're going to last longer, they're going to hit harder, and they're going to be absolutely fantastic. So so we're getting as many of them as we physically can, then we're going to load them up onto Balthazar Gelt, and then we're probably going to throw Balthazar Gelt into this mission over here to get the Staff of Volanis, and uh, the Staff of Volans. I don't know, I, I don't do Warhammer pronunciation, it's all the same. And then after that, we need to go track down the final increase of 5% missile damage and find the bloody Huntsman. Alright, this is it ladies and gentlemen, we've done it, the actual proper attack. Oh, we've got all of our Hellstorm rocket batteries ready, we've got them min maxed out to the absolute maximum. As you can see, each Hellstorm rocket battery is going to do 677 missile damage each. Our Hell Blaster volley gun is going to do 1711 because it can't physically do more than that. We've uh, kind of broken that one. Yeah, it's going to be stupid this fight. I am very excited to see what happens, but we've got a bunch of units to uh, kind of stand in front of the Hellstorm rockets and then the Hellstorm rockets are going to cause absolute chaos on an attacking chaos army. I know. What makes us even even better for us is I'm pretty sure they don't even have any range units, which makes this fight a little bit easy. Oh, I'm sorry, Uzhul Sidious. You're going to be fighting the mighty force of Balthazar Gelt as well as Toddbringer. Good old Ian. He drives a Ford Fiesta when he's not working out of his white van. And then when he gets out of his van, he casts flame spells. It's magical Ian. I mean, if you actually met a fire wizard called Ian Toddbringer who did actually drive around in a Ford Transit van, his fire spell would probably be shaking up a can of Lynx Africa and holding it in front of a lit flame. But honestly, that's enough to become the Archfire Priest of Balthazar Gelt's Golden Order. Right, so here we have it. We need to set ourselves up ready for a legendary battle. We have this nice great big hill behind us. I think it makes sense to make use of it. So let us first line up all of our fantastic ranged artillery. I want all of the rockets kind of out in the open, but positioned in a way so that all of them can shoot. I mean, just look at these things. They're absolutely stupid. It's just a bunch of dudes wearing yellow firing rockets across the map. Now, you might be wondering about my battle plan for today's fight. Well, my hope is that the enemy will charge towards us. There are, oh, and that's exactly what they're doing. There was always the chance that they wouldn't do that, and that would have been a real shame. But this is fantastic. They're going to offer up their entire army to us on a silver platter. Now, none of our rockets are going to be able to shoot for a while, and we're actually going to take them off fire at will, because we don't want them wasting a single shot. We also have our mage set up here, who's ready to cast his fantastic spell of increasing the fire damage of all of our rockets. I'm pretty sure that this hits all but one of our squads, which is fine. But we do actually have a very special battle plan for today's fight. Basically, we have our glorious Knights of the Everlasting Light. Uh, they're not actually going to be everlasting because they are Operation Distracto 9000. The Knights of the Everlasting's job is to charge headfirst into the enemy and keep them clumped up in a big ball. Whilst that's happening, Balthazar Gelt here is going to improve their armor massively and then cast a bunch of spells 
spells on top of them. Hopefully, they will last longer than five seconds. If they don't, that's fine. We'll just send in Baldric over here, and Baldric will willingly sacrifice himself for the greater good. Don't worry, he's no mortal. And here we go. It looks like we're ready to actually get started on some true proper chaos. You know what? I think it's time we open up fire. Men, open fire. I want everyone to target those chosen halberds at the back, and we're going to create the Mega Blob, a group of men whose only job is to last a long, long time. And in comes the flames. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> yes, the flames and fire kind of mostly just hit our own men there, but you know what? That's part of the charm. Immediately, the front lines of the Chaos Knights are getting eviscerated here. Oh, my goodness. What chaos is this? We haven't even cast our fire spell. So, Meiji Boy, increase missile damage by a further 25%. 677 is just not cutting it. How far can we go? 701! <laughs> go, my glorious men. Oh, yes, this is fantastic. This is art. Oh, yes, the uh, chaos forces are going to really be struggling now. Oh, this is just true chaos. They haven't even hit the front lines yet. It's just a bunch of missiles landing in the enemy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, these rockets. Oh, they are so powerful. They're doing about three times the damage they're meant to be doing, which is just perfect for me. Oh, fantastic. Oh, we're going to be able to do it. Most of their army's already routing. Oh, yes, even the cavalry trying to come around the side is just getting shredded by all of this. Oh, this is incredible. Yes, they can't even get close. Immediately, their men are breaking. This is it. We've done it. Oh, that was quite possibly the greatest quest battle I've ever seen. We didn't really take any losses at all, I don't think. Other than, of course, the one squad of um, um, sacrificial horse dudes. This has been a glorious battle. Oh, just look at all the men as they retreat, just getting shredded by all of the spare rockets we had lying around. Oh, this was perfect, wasn't it? A fantastic time to end the battle. <laughs> the Knights of the Everlasting did exactly as I wanted them. Firstly, they didn't ever last. They died immediately. And they managed zero kills. The rockets, on the other hand, managed to absolutely annihilate most of the known universe. They did absolutely fantastic. The Hellblast of Volleygun also did great, and so did, well, just about everything in my entire army. They were just lovely. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I've made some improvements. Our army is, you know, as incredible as always. But we've got yet another quest battle to fight. Once again, we're on the quest for the Staff of Volans, and we've got to defeat some uh, boring peasant farmers. I know. Apparently, this is going to be a tough fight. Look at this. Balance of power, 50-50. This is going to be rough, ladies and gentlemen. Or is it? Just a bunch of halberds with not much defense, some handgunners, and some demigriffs. This is going to be very interesting. Once again, we're going to deploy all of our artillery in one nice big clump with, of course, our volley gun in the middle. We're going to plop that steam tank up in the front as well. This time, because I expect an ambush to be happening, we're going to be having some spearmen defending the rear, well, and just every single flank in general, really. And we do have one bonus unit of great swords now. This is a very unique group. This is an extra special group, which is unbreakable great swords. Now, what these guys are going to be doing is they're going to be charging straight forward to the enemy, and because they're unbreakable, they're never going to retreat. And that's exactly what I look for from my great swords. So we're going to send a bunch of old crusty dudes uh, straight towards the enemy, and some fun is going to happen. Immediately, all of our rockets can fire, and so it's probably a good idea if we pause the game and cast our magical spell. And actually need to wait for the spell to be cast, and now that it's cast, we're going to turn back on fire at will, and away the rockets go. Oh, this is going to be one very nice opening volley. Right, the swordsmen are charging in. This is going to be a great start, and here comes our first few volleys straight into the enemy lines. Good first hit there, couple of misses, but all around, oh, that's some good hits on those great cannons. Very nice. Oh, and these halberds here. Lovely stuff. Now, of course, the accuracy isn't the best, but the closer they get, the more deadly we get, which is just fantastic for us. Oh, and that's their great cannon immediately destroyed and out of the game, as well as the unit of halberds, which was defending it. Let's get some of these units at the front. Oh my goodness, they have some men hidden away in the forests. <gasps> some ambushes. Oh, this is exciting. If only we were prepared for an ambush. Oh wait, we are. So, the great swords are all done dying immediately. So the halberds at the front. Yep, you really should have chosen to be in the second wave attacking, you know. Oh my goodness, our great swords are doing a fantastic job. Oh, they're fighting to the last and I'm so proud. So yes, they're trying to kind of come in on our flank and uh, get a surprise attack on us, but it's not going to work. Not at all. All we need is our spearmen to soak up all of the ranged hits as we slowly charge around the map, causing even more chaos. Oh, and this is perfect. As they retreat, all of our rockets are able to open up and chaos 
chaos is properly ensuing now. This is fantastic. No matter what direction they run off in, we're able to get them all. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Total victory. Oh, it was a bit of a scrappy fight at the end. Uh, lots of losses and a bit of a break in the line. But you know, it was an absolute great laugh. Couple of the rockets managed to get 254 kills, which is stupid considering this is an army comprised of a very large quantity of artillery. And the thing is, we haven't actually really hit their peak. You see, in the background, I've had something improving, something going on, which is very scary and very powerful. So our special improvement to make everything better is not just this brand new regiment of renowned Hellblaster Volley Cannon, which does 1,395 damage and is armored. It's actually this lovely guy here, Kurt Allen Stagg. You see, Kurt Allen Stagg has a couple of incredible bonuses. He provides the bonus of Sure and True, which provides a plus five reload skill, plus five percent missile damage, and plus five percent armor piercing missile damage for all nearby units. Fantastic, we can just plonk him down on a battlefield and he buffs everything. What makes him then even more powerful is that he can augment himself every once in a while for Hail of Fire, which imbues every single ranged weapon in a 40 meter radius with fire damage and adds plus 30 to their reload skill. And then later on, you can also get him up to Funnel Flame, which adds a further plus 30 to his reload skill. Now you might be thinking, what on earth does that mean? And on a fundamental level, ladies and gentlemen, what that means is you effectively turn the Hellstorm rocket battery from being just a rocket artillery piece which can fire a rocket, then you have to wait about seven seconds for the next volley, you can take it from that to suddenly being almost instantaneous. Suddenly your Hellstorm rocket battery, thanks to the Imperial gunnery bonus and the artillery master bonus, suddenly your rocket batteries are reloading at the rate of a fully automatic minigun. That's when you have to start questioning the balance of the game. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. I think this is probably where I'm going to have to call it a video, but if you wanted to do this yourself and take it beyond this point, then my advice would be to, of course, go find the Huntsmaster General uh, down fighting the lizard men over here in the Warhammer equivalent of the Brazilian jungles. And then also make sure to trail your hero around with a secondary army led by a Huntsmaster General who can either have a bunch of artillery or just whatever you want. You can give him a huge swarm of infantry just to stand in the way of the enemy. It's really up to you. And I also strongly recommend making sure that this guy is also the person in control of the Wissenland region because that immediately gives them plus 10% missile damage for artillery units. It's a real shame that sadly we can't find a way to exploit the game and take Balthazar go off of the region of Soland and put him onto Wissenland as well because if that was the case, we'd have been able to take the damage from being about 700 to probably closer to around about 1,000. And if we were having each and every single rocket hitting for 1,000, then that means if you were to shoot one of those missiles at, say, an enemy character, you'd be able to kind of take them out in about two volleys, provided half the shots hit. It also has great armor piercing capabilities and just general fantastic stuff. I also strongly recommend using these missiles against the undead, because undead factions have even more of a weakness to fire damage. And if you want to make things even more crazy, then make sure to use your Huntsmaster General and fly him straight into the middle of the enemy. I know it sounds stupid because this guy's a ranged hero, but if you can get him into the middle of the enemy, you can get him to cast Oil Flask. This hits an enemy and gives them a 50% flame weakness. I know, that's ridiculous. When added to the plus 20% flame weakness of the Fire Mage here, suddenly everything on the battlefield is a plus 70% weakness to fire damage. If you're fighting the undead, then they already have a plus 25% weakness to fire damage or whatever. Or maybe it's even plus 20, I can't remember. And so what you can do theoretically is get all of this combined, and even though your missiles say they're doing 1000 damage, they're actually going to be doing 2000 damage against the undead, because everything is going to have massive fire weakness, and meaning it's going to be doing even more damage. It's stupid, it's fantastic, I love it. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have to call it a day here, because I've spent spent probably about three days making this video, which is far too long for me to spend on one video, technically speaking. But you know, we've got many more games to cover, so it's time for us to move on. And if you have indeed enjoyed Total War Warhammer here today, then please do give the video a like, because it encourages me even more so to return to this game, because there is so much more to discover. I mean, just every single new DLC released for this game creates brand new ways to glitch it and cheese it. As always, a massive thank you to each and every one of my majestic patrons now enjoying this brand new custom-made end screen, I know. We spent four months of the Patreon budget crafting this glorious design. Probably, I don't know, most of the money goes to tea anyway. And hey, if you did enjoy this video, then you may want to consider subscribing to this very strange channel. It's unique and we'd absolutely love to have you on 
board for the ride. And if you sat there thinking, I wonder what video to watch next, look no further than these ones on screen now. They've been hand chosen by myself to be just exactly what you're searching for. Trust me, you're gonna love it. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely evening or day, midday, whatever day it is, and I'll see you in the next one.